Hello, welcome back to our channel once again. Today we want to discuss about documentation on properties in Ghana. The documents that we receive when we buy properties in Ghana, we normally call them indenture. What do you know about the indenture? Did you take your time to read through your document, which is the indenture? What did you understand and what did you not understand? A lot of people have requested that they want to understand certain things in the document because the terms that I use are not common terms. Yes. So today we want to learn about certain things in the document. We want to know much about the document and the differences in them and what they entails. So that is what we are diving in today. Now we have part of the document called site plan. Even the name alone should tell you what it entails or what is referring to so the site plan has the drawings and then the layout of the land that you bought the measurements your name the number of acres you bought all those details are on it and before those or this site plan can be developed a surveyor have to go on the land pick the land have the coordinates of the land and then develop a site plan with the coordinates so that when you run a search or you take the coordinates on the site plan and you put it on the ground it will be exactly where your portion of land is sometimes even people lose their land they lost the location with the help of the site plan you can trace your land back in so many years time yes so the site plans work is to tell you details on the land and the drawings or the shape of the land on the ground that is what the site plan does we have two types of the site plan in Ghana today we have the back code site plan and then we have the normal cadastral site plan the normal cadastral one the reason why a lot of people are not giving into that one today even though it is still working is because when you want to register your land with the normal cadastral site plan when you take the document to land commission a surveyor have to go back to the land to pick some other details before the registration can start but when you do the barcode site plan with that one every detail they need on the land are all embedded in the code or the, the, the coded site plan so with that one they don't need to be going to the site again in case they need any other information they just need to what scan the code and get the full details there that is why it is now an advanced site plan that everyone is doing on their property or is making use of today the drawings are there and the drawings are what shows the exact shape of your land if it is two plots you see the drawing and then the division will be there to show that this is one plot this is two plots so that is what show us the measurement and the shape of the land and then the bearing the coordinates and uh, your name the number of acres all those things are stated on it that is what makes the site plan so the site plan together with the uh, the document with the details and the histories of the land that is what makes the complete document so if the site plan is not in the indenture it is not a complete document so you realize that every document has the site plan of uh, and then also fixed in the indenture and that is what makes a complete uh, document sometimes when you buy properties some companies or individuals give you four copies of the site plan some even give six but you only put four into the document and these four that you put into the document you have extra two left so in case somebody wants to run a search or in future you want to sell your land you don't need to remove that one from the document you only need to use the extra one that is left for the person to run a search or something and also the cadastral one uh, one thing about the cadastral one is um, it, it, it has a different way they do that one and then the barcode also has a different way they do that one let me just show you example I don't know if it is clear so when you look at the site plan I'm holding here it is a barcoded site plan this is a barcoded site plan you can see the barcodes at the back yes it is a barcoded site plan you can see it at the back we also have here what we call the indenture what we call the indenture also a lot of people have the intention of buying farmlands and then later use it as residential land 
it is not advisable because a lot of people are facing challenges in that situation today some are even being taken to court by the family so be very careful when you are buying the land be specific what you want if you know in future you use the land for uh, residential purpose then buy it as residential land then you use it for your farming when the time comes the place develop you can now start building on it but either than that don't think you'll buy a farmland then in future you still have that authority or possession or need to build on it no unless you have to go and see the family and renew the terms from farmland to what residential land an issue of that source pop up recently between a family and then one of their clients who bought a farmland so many years back 19s the 19s the that way and then the person was taken to court finally the judgment has been given in favor of the family because in the document it stated that it is farmland not residential land so if you want to use it for residential and you have to go and see the family to agree with them before you can use it for residential purpose so stop doing that mistake buy either the farmland for farming when you have a change of mind that you want to use the place for residential go and see the family first negotiate with them and then they'll ask you to pay some amount you pay it to them then they'll do a new document in terms of residential uh, purpose for you then you add it to that of the farm so in case anything happen in future or anybody comes in future you can just present it to them that you have what served the two purpose when you buy the land and then you are given the document make sure you read every terms and condition in it every terms and condition in it it is very important it is very important for example the document i just show you today it is stated in it clearly that it is for residential purpose and cannot be used for any other purpose also it is stated in it that there is a grounds rent to be paid after the year lease expire it is a 99 year lease if it expire it means that you have to pay a grounds rent to the family to continue to enjoy your lease period on the land that is also stated there and also if there is any mineral resources or anything that of um, uh, resources that is in the land you are not supposed to touch it they state all those things in so that you know their terms and condition so if you are digging your foundation and you happen to find crude oil or bauxite or gold in it it is stated there that it is not yours it is still for the family so you don't have to touch it but if you exploit yourself without letting them know they can take you to court and at the end of the day to go against you you may even lose your property at the end of the day so let us be careful and follow the terms and conditions in the document because the moment you sign that document and the family head or the family also sign the document you are telling them that you have read all the terms and conditions and you have agreed to it that is why you signed are you getting it so if you violate any of them then it means that they also have the legal right to take you to court okay so let me read uh, a few of the terms and conditions that is in this document to you so that you understand what i mean by the terms and conditions uh, when you buy the land they write in the document um, this document is made on a property that we have for sale at Dodua. yeah we have a land land for sale at Dodua, and then this document is being prepared on the land so anybody who buys that land you have to follow these terms and condition and then it needs we call it covenant that is a covenant between you and the family some people name it agreement but in the document is stated here the lease hereby covenant with the lesser as follow so the terms leasee and lesser the one who leased the land to you is the leasee and you the one who bought the land you are the lesser that is the term so if i am the custodian of the land or the, i am the family head and i sell the land to you i am the leasee and then you the one who bought the land from me, you are the lesser so the terms and condition or the covenant we are reading now is for you the lesser to abide with or abide by to pay the rent hereby reserved at the time and in the manner aforesaid without any deduction whatsoever so you are supposed to pay the grounds rent that the family will charge you after your year lease expire without any subtraction so if you pay that is one of the covenants so you are supposed to pay a grounds rent when your year lease expire and then the clause b said not to use the dismissed land 
otherwise than for residential purpose only. So it is stated there clearly that you can't use it for any other purpose except residential purpose. Then clause C says not to assign, sublet, or part with possession of the dismissed land or any part thereof without the prior consent in writing of the lesser. So which means that if you buy the land from the family and then you also want to lease the land to the third party who is buying the land from you, the family is saying that you cannot do that unless you have to come to them and then have a terms with them or agreement with them. You have to write a letter to them to inform them that you want to lease that parcel of land you bought from them to another person. That is the only way you can lease it to another person. So if you don't have that agreement with the family and you want to sell your land, the moment you sell it to the third party, you sold all your interest in it. So the person is not accountable to you any longer. If any renewal or any terms of renewal, the person has to go to the original family who sold the land to you, the one who sold it to the third party. Then clause D said not to allow in or about the dismissed land anything which may become nuisance, danger or annoyance to the lesser or any owner or occupier of the adjacent property. So when you buy the land, it is for residential purpose. So you cannot go and build a factory there. Neither will you go and build a corn mill that will be making noise. No. The moment it becomes a nuisance, then it means it infringes the covenant that you had with the family. Because the family wants people who bought the land from them to live there in peace. So the family can take action against you. And there are people around you because it is written in the document. They can take action against you because that is what is stated there before you bought the land. And you agreed to the terms before you signed the document as well. But C says, at the expiration or sooner determination of the term created to yield up to the lesser dismissed land. So which means that uh, at the time your, um, your lease period is about to expire, that is when they will let you know the amount you're supposed to what pay or how the renewal is supposed to go or what you're supposed to do for your terms to be renewed for you. And when you come to um, number three, there's, it says the lesser hereby covenant with the lessee as follows. The lesser hereby covenant with the lessee as follows. The first one says the lessee hereby covenant with the lesser as follows. So which means that the one who is the original owner of the land you are buying it from, he is the one who gave the first clause, which is the lessee, the one who leads the land to you. He is stating all these conditions, all these covenants for you to abide with. So the three says the lesser hereby covenant with the lessee as follows, so which means you agreed with the one who is selling the land to you or who is leasing the land to you as follows. I'm reading that the lessee paying the rent hereby reserve and observe and performing the several covenant conditions and stipulations herein before on his part contain shall peace, peaceably hold and enjoy the dismissed land during the said term and any renewal term without any interruption by the lesser, his successor and assigns or any person or persons rightfully claiming by. All right, so thank you very much for watching us and always um, following us with every video that we post. Please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly do because we have a lot, I mean a lot to teach you concerning the land or property purchase in Ghana. And also, if you have any question that you would like us to answer or help you to understand pertaining properties in Ghana, kindly leave it in the comment section or you can pick our numbers and then WhatsApp us direct so that we can chat. If you want to buy any property in Ghana and then you want us to lead you to buy that property, you want us to take you to the processes of buying the property till the registration, we are always available. Any property you want, whether lands or houses to buy, we are available to give you the best.